Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM and some life content. In today's video, we are going to be discussing Tupperware. So because it's anti-MLM, I do have to say that just as a disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only and just my opinions. Also, I am getting sick and my throat is on fire right now. So if I sound weird or if I'm much quieter than usual, I'm very sorry, but it literally feels like <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get through this video because I want at least one video up for you guys I don't know if I'm gonna get any worse so in case I do get worse I want you guys to have at least one video this week so in case you don't know Tupperware which I feel like everybody knows Tupperware by now but if you don't know they have the um, Tupperware containers and they're actually called Tupperware and it was founded by Earl Tupper in 1946, I believe it was. And then in 1947, he actually patented the lid. It's a burp lid. So there's like a special seal where um, there won't be like spillage and things of that nature. So of course, you know, great product, very innovative for the time. Cause you gotta remember this is in the late forties, early fifties. And I would like to add that I did find a really great video on, I believe the channel's name is Foot and Mouth. I'll leave a link to her video because she went over Tupperware and Avon. So I, I'll link that below in case you guys want to take a look at that too, because I, I do think she did a really great job with that video. So with Tupperware, um, what they ended up doing was he had it in stores and it wasn't selling. Unfortunately, because people just didn't really, I guess people didn't really understand the concept yet. It was a very innovative product for the time. So, or at the time, that was that whole fiasco. So he had to figure out what he was going to do. Well, he ended up talking to a woman named Brownie Wise. And she became, I want to say she became a legend, basically. <laughs> Um, if you don't know who Brownie Wise is, she ended up taking over, I want to say she took over Tupperware. She really did with like her sales and everything like that. She ended up being the first woman to be on the cover of Business Week, which I think is an accomplishment. And as anti-MLM as I am, I do have to acknowledge the fact that she really truly paved the way for not even in, in the MLM industry, but I feel like she really paved the way for a lot of women who were housewives, who stayed at home, because you have to remember, this was the 50s. Not right now, where it's a little, you know, women are in the workforce and it's normal for women to be working. But back then, the woman's place was in the kitchen and with the kids, you know what I mean? And I hate to say that, I'm not trying to be offensive, but that's just how it was. The woman's place was not in the business world and it just didn't exist. And I feel as though Brownie Wise took advantage of this and just grew an empire, really. And I think it was great for her to show women that just because you're a mom, just because you're a housewife, doesn't mean that that's all that you are. And not saying that anyone who stays at home and is a mom, not saying anyone is, that that's bad. If you're able to do that, that's great. But back then that was the norm. And back then a lot of women, they wanted something else. They wanted to be able to contribute to the family. They wanted to be able to have something where they could be proud of and they could make a couple of extra bucks and be your own boss. And I think that it was also a great way for women to be able to talk to other women, to be able to socialize. And yes, you're still selling something, but at the same time, you're able to socialize with people your age. I'm not a mom. I'm not a stay at home mom or a housewife or anything like that. But I can only imagine just how much some of these women are craving that human interaction and how some of these women, they just miss being able to go out with their friends and being able to socialize. And that's how a lot of MLM reps are able to get those types of women into their downline. And unfortunately, it's become a predatory practice. And so anyway, back to Brownie Wise, she, 
I want to say that she became like a business tycoon almost. I mean, she really, truly, she got up there. She really did. This next part is a theory of mine, so don't take this as factual or anything like that. But I did want to bring it up because I want to see if maybe anyone else has the same thoughts or if it's just me going crazy. So we have Earl Tupper, the creator, innovator, founder, all of that. And then we have Brownie Wise, this saleswoman on a mission who built an entire team and is making Earl Tupper money. And from the articles that I've read, it seems like they butt heads quite a lot. And I think it's because Brownie Wise, just from reading things, I don't know because I don't know her personally, but just from reading things, it seems like she was a very strong, independent woman that don't need no man. And I think that his ego was hurt just a little bit. And I, I don't know if it's that he felt threatened by her because she did question him a lot. She did fight him a lot. And I just, I don't know if it's that he brushed it off as, well, she's a woman, so, but I'm the man. And I don't, I'm not trying to get into any sort of argument in that sense. But I do feel as though he might have felt a little intimidated by her because here's this woman who's questioning you and who's at times kind of telling you how to run your business because she's the one that's talking to the customers. She's the one that's demonstrating all of these products. So she kind of knows what the customers want and don't want. And she's making you all this money, so there's really not much that you can do at that point because if you get rid of her, all of that money is gone. Well, not gone, because at that point, there's already been a lot of hype around the brand. So, of course, they already have their name out in the world and stuff like that. But then, eventually, that came to a stop. And what ended up happening was Brownie Wise, she had, I think it was like a luau or something like that. She didn't plan for bad weather. Now, this is just from an article I read. So again, this is, I'm not 100% sure if this is how it happened. But there was a luau and she did not plan for bad weather. Well, apparently a storm came in and I believe it was 21 people were injured. So those people sued Tupperware because there was a point in time where Brownie Wise kind of became famous a little bit. And Earl Tupper was a little upset that she was so famous. And, but at the same time, a lot of the Tupperware products weren't really pictured with her. It was mostly Brownie Wise. So at one point it was, I think, I don't know if it was like a jealousy thing or what it was, but anyway, so the luau. There were all these lawsuits and Earl Tupper ended up firing Brownie Wise because I mean, you have to deal with all these lawsuits and I can, I can kind of see where he was coming from. Um, and of course, obviously, even without Brownie Wise, they still succeeded because Tupperware is still around today. And I remember hearing about Tupperware ladies and Tupperware parties long, long, long time ago. So that was kind of the rise and fall of Brownie Wise. And there was a, there were, a number of years where they didn't want to have anything to do with Brownie Wise. They didn't want her name being associated with Tupperware. She has now since been, you know, she's in the website or she's on the website. She's talked about a lot because she, honestly, in my personal opinion, I really think that she's the one that really made Tupperware just sore. I, I really do think that she was the reason why this company became what it is today. It's, yeah, it was an innovative product and it was not like anything that was on the market at the time, but someone needed to demonstrate these products. Brownie Wise demonstrated these products and she did it in a fun way. And she gave a lot of, I honestly think she probably gave a lot of women hope that they can go out and do something else and still be the mom that they are and still be the wife that they are. And I mean, like I said, you got to think about it. 
this is back in the 50s when this started and that was not the norm. So that was a little backstory I wanted to give and some theories that I had because I do think that they were important to talk about. Now, since the MLM structure has gotten really predatory because I really truly think Brownie Wise was doing it to help women. I don't think that she was doing it to be predatory. And I do think that she was doing it because it was fun for her and she was able to provide for her and her son because she was a divorced single mother. So, but again, I'm against MLM structures altogether. But I think that now with the rise of social media and the internet, the markets have gotten so saturated with all of these MLMs. And that is why it's just, when you think of an MLM or when you think of something like that, it's just, it has this stigma around it because there's no picking and choosing who your salespeople are. It's not, you know, it's a Friday night with your girls and you're going to hang out and then you're going to sell Tupperware or something like that. No, it's all online. It's not really that personal anymore. And I mean, maybe that's just my opinion. Maybe that's just my way of looking at it. Moving along, I did want to go over. I'm going to pull it up on my phone. Um, I did want to actually no, I have notes right here for it. I have notes and stuff on my phone, so just bear with me. <laughs> and like I said, I'm not feeling so hot, so there's that portion too. But the business kit is $99 and it's a two-step payment plan. So you pay $30 up front and then if you sell $900 worth of sales within your first 60 days, you only pay that $30 fee. But if you don't, you have to pay for the second installment, which is uh, $69. So if you can make $900 worth of sales, you're only paying $30 for your business kit. So there's that. Um, and then with the compensation that you get, it's 25% profit on personal sales, and you can make up to 35% commission, or yeah, 35% profit when you meet your monthly sales volume. And then, you can also have the opportunity to qualify for trips, um, cash bonuses, a car. And I watched a video of a Tupperware consultant. Apparently, if you don't want the car, you can get the cash bonus instead, which honestly, I would take the cash bonus instead because the car has like a giant sticker on it that just says Tupperware. Like it is so gaudy and Y'all, it's, it's just as bad as when you see a, a pink Cadillac, you know that it's Mary Kay. It's, but I mean, with that being said, it has a giant, I'll pop a picture up on the screen, but giant sticker that says Tupperware. Why you would want to drive around with a giant sticker like that is beyond me, but maybe it's just my opinion. The next thing I wanted to go over was the income disclosure statement. So there are quite a number of inactive consultants. There's 21,322 of those. They make up 47.88% of the company and on average they earn $26.39. Then you have a regular consultant. There's 21,843 of those people. The amount of participants in the entire company is 49.04%. They make on average $653.63 a year. And you can keep going down the income disclosure statement, but it looks like the, I guess you can say livable wages, depending on what part of the country you're in, I would say star director and two star director are pretty decent. Like I said, depending on where you live and unless if you have financial help from someone else, but just remember this is before taxes and fees. This is before anything of that nature. So a lot of times they'll say that this is an income disclosure statement. And a lot of times people will think that this is actually what they're taking home, but it's not, it doesn't, it does not include everything else. So if you look at star director and two star director, for star director, there's 77 people, number of participants, who make on average $31,521.26. And then the two star director, there's 20 people in the company 
that are making on average $54,773.06 a year. And then if you keep going up, executive director, there's only two people in the company. And then five-star director, there's only four people in the company. And then three-star director, there's only 25 people in the company. That's the income disclosure statement. Hey, so editing Monica here. I forgot to talk about something in my video. I'm going to leave an article about it in the description box as well. But in November of 2019, I'm going to read it off of the, the computer. But in November of 2019, the Tupperware previous CEO, Trisha Stitzel, I think I'm saying that properly, she has a separation agreement that includes a 1.9 million severance pay along with benefits and a bunch of other documents that were filed with the SEC with stand, which that stands for Securities Exchange Commission or Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, she resigned around that time and it was a little under two years of her being a CEO with Tupperware. And there's also an agreement that calls for a car allowance of $30,000 payable in installments over 24 months. She will also receive $125,000 in a consulting agreement to support the leadership transition through the end of the year, so end of last year. And I think that's nuts that she got this. I believe that their resignation, there's another part in the article, it says the company's stock had fallen nearly 73% from the start of the year to Stitzel's resignation. It has fallen since, or fallen further since then and was down 77% from the start of the year on Monday afternoon. So I do believe that they probably told her to resign because of the stocks plummeting and I wasn't really able to find much about why this happened. I tried looking but maybe I didn't look hard enough. Maybe that's what it is. So if you guys have any theories, if you have any articles or anything like that, link them in the comments section so I can take a look at it. But I just wanted to add that into the video because I'm so sorry, but I completely forgot. I have sick person brain right now. So <laughs> I'm very sorry. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Being anti-MLM, I can see how at one point, just to play devil's advocate here, I can see how at one point the MLM, I guess, idea, not necessarily the model, but the idea of it was great for who they target, which is women. Because let's be honest here, most reps are women. I can see how the idea for women in the beginning was great because it was a way for them to make extra money on the side and everything like that. And back then there wasn't really too much market saturation with a lot of these companies. But nowadays, with the fact that there's so much coverage and there's so many people on the internet, there's so many people on social media, and they're not picking and choosing who they make their consultants. So for example, if you ever look into Brownie Wise or Tupperware in general, it seems like she made a personal connection with her future consultants, at least in the beginning. I don't know about the towards the end, but at least in the beginning, she had a personal connection with them. She had physical parties. She showed them how to use these products that they're going to use on a daily basis anyway. And when people saw just how much fun she had doing it, then they thought about it like, oh, I can do this too. Whereas nowadays, when, when you look at some of these MLM Huns out there, they just, how can you possibly know that someone's going to be a great addition to your team if you've never met them before? And obviously, if someone has anti-MLM in their profile, and you're going to pitch them and tell them, oh, I really love your feed and I think that you'd be great for this business opportunity that I have. You obviously, one, did not do any sort of digging because you would have noticed that it said anti-MLM. And then on top of that too, just because someone has a pretty Instagram feed does not mean that they're gonna be good at selling products or that they're gonna be a great addition to your team. I just, it's a horrible business model. 
And the fact that there's so many MLM companies, so many reps out there. There are reps out there that are with three, four different companies. You can't tell me about financial freedom if you're with three or four different companies. Obviously, you don't have financial freedom if you have to be with three or four of them. You know what I mean? And I think that Brownie Wise, and I know that I'm talking about her a lot in this video, and I'm not really talking about the founder of Tupperware because let's be honest, I feel like she really made this company blow up and just her taking over and being able to make so many sales. I do think that in her mind in the beginning, it was for a good reason. I don't think that it was for a predatory reason like the MLM companies are today. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I don't know how the MLM business model still works today. I really don't. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. And the fact that people say that their MLM company is a business is very insulting to people who actually have their own small business. It is. And whether you take offense to that or not, I'm not going to apologize for it because I take offense to it. We have a small business and for you to say that you're the same as us, you're not, you're not. But I guess I've kind of rambled a little bit and I don't know if it's because of how I just feel like today, <laughs> but anyway, if you have watched up to here, make sure to hit like, subscribe, support me on Patreon, check out my merch, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye.